And we are going to start back with a with a story we covered last year, a little bit of a follow up. And uh, Scott, we're going to he's going to take us to take the lead on it. So take it away, Scott. Sure, sure. This uh, this article was from Insider.com, and uh, the title is Bishop Robbed on Livestream Claimed His Lux Lifestyle Was Funded by God, But Feds Say the Money Wasn't His. And so, yeah, so this is something that the nonprofit has touched on previously. Apparently, oh, and, by, and this was uh, this article was written by Haven Arecchio Agresitz, on, and it was published on December 21st of last year. Uh, so this Bishop Lamore Whitehead, um, he was famously um, robbed on live stream during during one of his uh, sermons. And uh, he's one of these prosperity gospel guys where he collects all the money. Where's the flashy clothes? Where's the, you know, the expensive jewelry? And so so they were robbed at uh, at gunpoint on live stream as it happens. And uh, they were robbed of about a million dollars worth of jewelry and 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 things that they were wearing it just first of all what the fuck i mean what what's up with that anyway there, there's more to the story so this this robbery story brought the attention of the press and of the police and so they started looking a little bit more closely at bishop whitehead and discovered that there was a little bit something fishy going on under the under the covers here he was he's been charged and was arrested uh charged with um uh, what was he charged with? Uh, extortion, wire fraud, and making false statements to the FBI. And you know this this story just really, really hits me right in a sore spot. I I, I could rant on this for for days. And so before I say anything, I'll I'll see if any mm -hmm. I'll see what the rest of the panel has to think about this. Well, uh, you know, Scott, if I could jump in real quick, I, I, I took down a couple stats on this that really stood out to me. So what's really interesting is, you know, on, on, on Sunday, less than 24 hours before he was arrested, he held a sermon in which he said Gucci, Fendi, and Louis outfits were proof that a mix of God's will, unwavering faith, and financial donations that have, you know, that's what led to his wealth. But what's really, what's really uh, interesting is you're talking about the people that he abused. So there's, there's two people that really stand out to me. One, um, it was between April 2020 and July 2021, uh, Whitehead defrauded a member of his church by eliciting $90,000 from her, promising he'd find her housing and then use the money as an investment in his real estate business. Uh, after the woman transferred the money from her retirement account to Whitehead, he used it to buy luxury goods and spend it on himself, you know, per the FBI, uh, and he never found the woman a house. Um, and then the second, it was between April and May of 2022. Whitehead asked to borrow 500000 from a businessman in exchange for a stake in his real estate business. Of course, that man didn't see anything else coming back. It's What we're seeing here is no different than the mountains of crooks and snake oil salesmen that we see plastered across this, I mean, kind of a capitalistic hellscape. Um, he's just another fucking vulture. Uh, he's using this guise of holiness and success to lure people in who have been primed to follow leaders like sheep to the slaughter. Does this justify his behaviors? No. Should he be held responsible for his actions? Of course. Uh, but I think the people involved would benefit from taking some time to evaluate why they so readily gave their hard-earned money to this person. Um, they were wanting to make money. They, they were trying to make gain. Uh, I talked about how they were, you know, kind of, I'm going to put in just a little bit, but then I'm going to get back a whole bunch. And that right there is just corrupt at its core. Um, Kelly, I'm really interested in what you have to say about this. I know you and I talk about some of this stuff on the side. Um, well, I first, I'm really glad to see Bishop Bling Bling get what's coming to him. Um, I do not condone or encourage robbing people at gunpoint and stealing a million dollars worth of jewelry from them. But in this case, it led to something bigger and better, right? One of my favorite things to say to people is, may life give you exactly what you deserve. And if you're a good person, it's a compliment. It's well wishes. But if you're a dick, and in this case, I was happy to finally see someone get out of life exactly what they deserve. If you're going to go ahead and build people out of their savings, you're going to go and con poor people into financing your outlandish lifestyle, a million dollars worth of jewelry that gets that was what was stolen from them. Then when someone robs you and steals that million dollars worth of jewelry, mm -hmm. and instead of you being the poor victim, but you turn into the criminal yourself upon closer inspection, you got a lot of life exactly what you deserved. What do you think, Phil? 
Yeah, I, I think he deserves what he has gotten because to um, I realize that th this identity, th sorry, this um, trying to coerce persons to to fraud is something that he has done before because he was charged and uh, convicted of identity theft in 2006 using a victim's personal information to buy cars and motorcycles. So this is nothing new for him, right? Um, mm. And he had several civil lawsuits. He was convicted of those things in 2008 and served five years currently in Sing Sing Correctional Facility before being released in 2013, right? So I, I think he's still carrying on the griff uh, from yeah, before. I agree. I agree. And, and um, on top of that, he, um, he tried to persuade the, the businessman that he, um, that he was earlier got $5,000 from, right? unscrupulously, I must say, in a scrup sorry, scrupulous manner. Um, he tried to coerce the person in lending him $500,000. But he tried to, to, to sweeten the deal by claiming he can get um, favorable actions from the New York City uh, government in order yeah. so that he could get that money. He, he told the person, look, I can do some favors for you. And, and, and you know, there, there's, there's a 500,000 investment that you can get millions from. So he, he is not, this is nothing new to him. No, it certainly right? isn't. Scott, did you yeah. want to add something? J Jason? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, there, there's really a couple of things going on here. First of all, yeah, there's this, guy who's ripping people off i mean he's stealing from them and mm -hmm. he's clearly not doing that great of a job of it either so um you know so we keeps getting we should have ex exactly yeah we, we should <laughs> we should have expected this we should have expected this but yeah but the other the other side of this is these people that they're i mean the the, the circumstances are are very frustrating they're very heartbreaking and anger inspiring it, it's these people he's he's playing on their trust and and it's not just like yeah. some guy walking up to you or you know trying to you know play three card monty on the street or something he's in a position that is traditionally uh looked to uh as a trustworthy position as as something to that somebody can lean on in hard times and 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 so on and so it's it's to me, that makes it particularly heinous. His followers are vulnerable yeah. to this type of thinking. I mean, to this type of situation, uh, they attribute an unwarranted level, unwarranted level of trust uh, and admiration mm -hmm. to these leadership figures, these these religious figures, uh, and that puts them in a position where they can be easily manipulated. And we've we've covered stories like this time and time again on the nonprofits. Um, and, mm -hmm. um, I'm getting going on the rant here. So if, if you want to shut me down, just, just let me know. Um, but it's, it's, it's an example of the halo effect. And, and if you're not familiar with the halo effect, yeah. simply psychology describes it as the halo effect is a cognitive attribution bias as it involves the unfounded application of general judgment to a specific trait. For example, if we perceive a person to be warm and friendly, we will attribute a number of other associated traits to that figure without any knowledge that they're true, such as they're generous. And so mm -hmm. if you if you if you see a positive trait in a person, you're likely to ascribe other positive traits. And so there's this connection in uh, in many people's minds, not in mine, but in many people's minds that trustworthy trustworthiness and godliness are like so closely tied together. And so yeah. they see this man of God here and they think this is someone we can trust. I mean, how much more vulnerable could you get in a position like that? And so then, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to realize that these people can take advantage regardless of, of whether, you know, this is even separate from the God issue, whether or not there is a God, mm -hmm. we, we can even set that disagreement aside. We can all agree mm -hmm. though, that the people running the churches 
are people. They're they're people, people. and they're going to be yeah. uh, they're going to be prone to the nastiness and the the dishonesty and and all the foibles of being mm -hmm. uh, of being a human being. And so, even setting aside the God thing, this is something that we should all be able to agree on. Um, and, and that is that we need to be able to trust these, um, uh, trust these people in these positions because, yeah, you know, there has to be, there has to be people that we can trust. I don't know, Jason, what do you uh, think? Well, so look, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, I, I have no disagreement with what you're saying. And especially when you're talking about the halo effect, uh, it brings up a lot. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to say. The first thing I'd like to like to ask maybe all of y'all is how much of a responsibility do the parishioners play in this situation? What, what I'm saying is, yes, this guy is automatically considered a good person. He's considered holy, trustworthy, godly, you know, and all the things that you attributed to, you know, it gets smoke, you know, you can show up somewhere and be a Christian and be like, I have a community right away. I say the right words. I act a certain way. Oh, you must be a good person. Watch my kids. So, okay, I understand that. You know, you, you mentioned that in psychology. That's what we study in psychology. So, yeah, you're, you're dead on about that. You saw that with uh, Ted Bundy. He had, the, he had the halo effect like a motherfucker. I mean, that guy, that guy slaughtered people, and people were swooning over yeah. him. So, yeah, all because he was a good-looking guy. Even the judge He's, said, you, you know, you're such a well-spoken and good-looking guy. It's a shame that, you know, you're a killer. So, the, the, but, again, I'll, I'll bring it back, and I feel you look like you want to say something. I just, I, I wanted to ask mm -hmm. what responsibility do the parishioners play in this? Like, where should we be like, well, you, you that was a fucking snake and it bit you. That's what it did. What snakes do. I, I don't know. How do you feel about that? Phil? Yeah, I, I, I think the parishioners, um, as you correctly said, they have in their mind, this is because they are projected these guys in these leadership positions within, especially the church. Our, our religion um, tend to be projected as, as, as these guys who are supposed to be pious, who are supposed to be trustworthy, you know, and of course they take advantage of that, right? They take advantage of that. And then on top of that, I realize too that what they do, what these leaders do there, because the congregants have this perception, they play on the sympathy of their congregants, right? They, yeah. they create this false victim mentality to garnish sympathy, right? Um, and, yeah. and, and if you realize he claimed that is a conspiracy against him. But a conspiracy against him by whom? You know, it, it, it is... It is, it is mind baffling. And then on top of that, these grifters claim to have this connection with a God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then do this to a hard, to honest, hard working people. And my thing is, if this God exists, he just sits back and watches the trauma the actual victims go through and do nothing. What do all guys think about that? I'm not sure what Anything? to think about that, honestly. I, I I look at the con that this guy pulled, and I, I think one of the big cons, and, and it's how he got into that position where people trust him, is by how did he get that title bishop? I, I brought this up the first time he came in. There, <laughs> yeah. He, just, he yeah. just gave yeah. it to himself, yeah, right? right? And you yeah. think there'd be some kind of oversight on that title by the religious community? <laughs> I mean, you can't just go out and call yourself a doctor without having some kind of qualification because other doctors are going to call you out, right? And you would other think yeah, that other right. like real mm -hmm. bishops would be speaking out against the false representation of the title. I mean, just just to have him him make himself a bishop tells you that he's a con man to begin with, right? That's that's a warning sign to begin with to me. Um, if someone can just name themselves a bishop, what meaning does the title have at all? It doesn't. It has nothing. You know, do you, you see what I mean? Anybody yeah. want to yeah, follow if, up on that? Or if I could jump in. Thoughts? Yeah. So, so having grown up evangelical and with like a strong kind of Southern Baptist backbone, bishop, there were bishops all over the fucking church. So the thing is this, is like, okay, so the guy did this shit where he defrauded people, identity theft. He served his time. Well, 
there's that big narrative within Christianity of like, that was my past me. This was before I was saved. I was lost. This was tribulation. Like people are really ready to forgive some bullshit because when you think about it, again, I, I bring this example up a lot. It's like when you're at a bar and you're drinking with people and the fish was, you know, this big and the girl was this hot and I was just blah, blah, blah. Everything's bigger and more bullshit. Well, nobody calls each other out because the other person is also lying next to you. So mm -hmm. you're allowing for these lies in this fucking echo chamber. So of course he's a bishop and he probably named other people bishops and other people. I mean, that's what happened. I remember in the church I grew up in, you just have this little click of people and they give each other these titles and they have these <laughs> decisions and they just fucking disperse whatever they concoct and, and no. then see what happens. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I don't know, Scott. How do you feel about that, man? I, I, I want to actually jump. If, I, I want to jump back to your question, actually, Jason. Earlier, you're asking what's the responsibility of the congregants, and and okay. And, and first of all, I think we would all agree that you know we're not victim blaming here. We don't want to victim blame. You know, they they bear no responsibility for the for the actions. Mm -hmm. They weren't asking for. They weren't dressed for it, right? They weren't they weren't asking for it, um, and so. As, as far as the crime itself is concerned, they, you know, they have no responsibility. It's entirely on, yes. on, on the bishop, mm -hmm. on the bishop. And, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. but, uh, having said that we all have a responsibility to, um, to, to check, to check up on things, to be, uh, you know, there's a the reasonable mm -hmm. amount of self-preservation and observation and knowledge of your environment. And, you know, if not only for your own safety, but also for the safety of the others around you. So, so the congregants, I think, do yeah, I have agree. a responsibility to make sure that their trust is well-placed, to make sure mm -hmm. that their, uh, their confidence is well-placed, to make sure that there is a uh, good reason, reference checks and things like that that's not that's not relevant to the to the to the crime itself but it's part of being part of this human society and i think if we if we want to uh shed some of this uh irrational baggage you know it's just gonna it's gonna take things like this and and i do have some i'll, I'll just say one more thing here uh, i do want to um say that there is good news there's good news and i, I found a gallup uh poll uh, according to Gallup, Americans' ratings of honesty and ethical standards of clergy have been on the decline. Mm -hmm. In recent years, the percentage of Americans that would rate ethical standards of clergy as high or very high uh, has decreased from a high point of 67 percent, and that was in 1985, down to a low of 37 percent today. So, so trust in 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 these uh, in in these uh, pedestal positions, right? These these positions where people are just kind of pushed up into the into this location here, pushed up into this uh, position. Uh, trust in those positions is is falling, and and I think the evidence shows that you know it's 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 warranted uh, mm -hmm. that the trust should oh, yeah. fall, and so so there are you know it it shows that we're at least wising up. You know we're getting yeah. we're getting uh, we're getting better. Yeah, I agree. Phil, yeah. you want to get the last word in yeah. on this? Yeah, um, the. The thing is, you see how these guys play on the trust too is but he we know he was previously found guilty of identity theft and larceny, right? But then he makes the claim that God transformed his life through grace and yeah, love. Yeah, see, see. Right. <laughs> so and then he claims there it is. everybody thought I was a villain. But now they're seeing I was anointed by God. This is 24 hours before he got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> right. Terrible. But, but, Terrible. but the irony is, is like, thick. Well, the irony is ironic. thick. Well, the Christian <laughs> yeah, God yeah. is a forgiving God, though. So, but it's so it's okay. See, yeah, that's the whole fucking thing. Him, See, that's you know? the problem. Yeah. Yep, that is the problem. Yeah, that's that the, is the problem. That's the fucking thing. And then who are you to not forgive somebody, right? Who, If God can forgive me, who are you? You're just a mere man. You don't understand. God uses me. And. Of course, yep. you know, look at David and look at all these other shit bags oh, yeah, in the yeah. fucking Bible. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So it's even so, yeah, worse yeah, than just trust too. is is if you if you lack that trust, you're shunned. If right. you don't yeah. if you don't have that blind trust, if you start to question, I wonder if we should be giving five thousand dollars to our, you know, to our bling wearing uh, mm -hmm. you know, ex-con mm -hmm. here. I wonder if that would be safe. No, 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 don't doubt. You have no faith. Your faith is weak. Go, you know, it's right. You're screwed, yeah. even if you even if you try to be reasonable. 